Let us pray. May the words from my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be ever acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. So I'm going to begin tonight with a little bit of a confession. Easter Vigil is not a service that is widely used in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. It's not really part of our tradition, at least not in the churches that I have been involved with since being born Lutheran. I've attended only one other Holy Saturday worship service. It too was at an Anglican church, and I attended on the invitation of friends who promised me that we would be going for beer after the service. Now that, my friends, is a very Lutheran tradition. (laughs) So when Father Don asked me if I would give the homily this evening, I had to ask him just what the tone of the service was. I wondered, are we still grieving the death of Jesus, or are we celebrating his resurrection? Father Don explained for me that since the sun has set, we are now celebrating a new day, and it is a day of resurrection. But really, are we? Or are we like those first women witnessing the empty tomb, still looking for the living in the place of the dead? I mean, let's be honest. It's hard to peer into that empty tomb and see new and abundant life when we are surrounded by so many signs of death. Rapid homelessness, racism, homophobia, the climate crisis, residential schools, political upheaval, the seemingly never-ending pandemic, the war in Ukraine. All these things affect our world. As well, individually, so many experience additional grief when they lose loved ones, experience job loss, suffer broken relationships, and have personal illness, both physically and mentally. How can we not be looking for the living among the dead? We really don't have that much choice. It's no wonder that the disciples heard that first Easter proclamation from the women as an idle tale. It's no wonder that many people continue in the footsteps of those disciples and receive the Easter message to be an idle tale. In fact, more so than ever, we should not be surprised as we ourselves are living in an age of idle tales filled with many questions. What are we to believe? What is truth and what is a wild conspiracy theory? An empty tomb? Just what does that mean? The women early in the morning carrying spices come to do final preparations for their teacher, for their dear friend's body. An empty tomb was not what they expected to find at the end of their sad journey. Our whole liturgy tonight is a reminder that the entire story of God's relationship with us is a story of the unexpected. As we heard from the prophet Isaiah, for your thoughts, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says God. Lucy Lind Hogan writes, From the beginning we have been challenged to see the unexpected, the bewildering and impossible. God is always doing new things. Out of a formless void came light, water, dry land. From the clay on a riverbank, God formed creatures in God's own image. We are told that wolves shall live with the lamb. People walk through the sea on dry land, and the word becomes flesh and dwells among us. Do we not perceive it? 
Are we willing to believe that nothing will be impossible with God? We see God do impossible things every day. Unfortunately, we ignore or dismiss them. We look the other way or we search for a plausible explanation. Easter is not the time to offer a scientific, plausible account. Once again, God has done the impossible. Death has no dominion over the Holy One. In a world so full of death, the story of the empty tomb is for us a story of hope. It is our Christian calling to be hopeful. Christian hope is about knowing that in spite of everything, in spite of all the challenges, we are with God, with Jesus in the chaos. Hope is a gift of the Holy Spirit that lies within wait each of us just waiting to be activated. It was St. Augustine who said, Hope has two daughters, anger and courage. Anger at the way things are, courage to see that they do not remain as they are. And so hope is a choice. It's a choosing to say yes to life in spite of everything that, set, that tries to say no. Now to proclaim the resurrection is not to ignore the cross. The empty tomb challenges us to face the pain and not to deny it. It is always healthier to face the facts than to remain in denial. But it is choosing to say yes to God in the midst of chaos, suffering, and loss. Remember Jesus' words, I have come so that you might have life and have it abundantly. Joan Chittister writes, the cross is supposed to take its toll on us. It forms us to find God in the shadows of life. Ironically enough, it is the cross that teaches us hope. When we have survived our own cross, risen alive from the grave of despair, we begin to know that we can survive again and again and again, whatever life sends us in the future. It is this hope that carries us from stage to stage in life, singing and dancing around those shadowed places. My dear friends, as you peer into that empty tomb and look for the living in the place of the dead, know that Easter is not the celebration of a one-time event that happened centuries ago. Easter is rather a never-ending cycle of death and resurrection. It happens again and again and again. Easter is God giving us divine love with a good dose of hope and bringing it into all the worries and griefs of our lives and saying to them, I beg to differ. <laughs> For as St. Paul writes, if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Amen.